In this video I'm going to be looking at social class and grade expectations, but I don't just want to look at it in pure isolation. I want to look at it through the lens of Pip's own awareness of it, because I think that's probably one of the best ways of tracking Pip's development as he grows through the course of the novel. And I think one of the best places to start is with the character of Joe, who really doesn't change very much over the course of the novel. The Joe we see at the very beginning is the same old Joe we see married to Biddy at the end. So he provides a kind of constant. He's a yardstick that we can use to measure Pip's change as he goes along. And what we see at the beginning is this quotation here. I determined from this that Joe's education, like steam, was still in its infancy. This comes in the context of talking about Joe's difficulties with literacy. Now remember that this phrasing is coming from the adult Pip who's looking back in retrospect. It's not coming from the child Pip who's there in the room with his brother-in-law and surrogate father figure. So it's interesting that the older Pip should choose to use a term like infancy, because infancy implies the potential for growth. It seems to suggest that Joe, over the course of time, will develop into somebody of more articulacy. And I'm going to suggest that this is not an appropriate way to look at Joe, because Joe is absolutely happy where he is, and the entire point of his character is to provide that kind of constancy that we can then use to reflect on Pip. This phrasing, insignificant though it seems, is an example of the kind of misjudgment that Pip has a tendency to make about the other characters in the novel. Now just to move forward a chapter or so, we really see the true beginnings of Pip's class awareness come from his first meeting with Estella at Satis House. And there's two quotations that I've got here. The first one is Pip's self-consciousness at looking at his hands after Estella has mocked them. And then the other one is Pip's follow-up to that very well-known quotation in which Estella mocks Pip for calling the knaves Jacks. This is the seed of Pip's class awareness, but it's not fully formed at this stage. What we see at this early point is that Pip's self-consciousness and his sense of inferiority is based entirely on things that are personal and individual, and all to do with how beautiful Estella is in comparison with him. There isn't yet, at this stage, a sense of connection to wider society, because Pip isn't old enough yet, but as he grows, it's incidents like this that provide the foundations for Pip's later self-consciousness. So already, even as we haven't yet got beyond the first few chapters of the novel, we're beginning to see a kind of trajectory develop in Pip's growth. He's gone from complete obliviousness about all things class to the beginnings of what will become an awareness of class. But he's got to go through an intermediate step first, which is this personal self-consciousness that will later be connected to wider society. And I think, looking at the big picture, it's worth examining the title of the novel itself, which comes up a lot within the dialogue. Every time his fortunes are mentioned, they are always referred to as his expectations, his great expectations. And the first example of this is chapter 18. Now, what people mean by expectations is never explicitly defined within the novel, but it is treated as if it is a piece of official legal terminology. So look at this quotation here from Mr. Jaggers. Although I have used the term expectations more than once, you are not endowed with expectations only. There is already lodged in my hands a sum of money amply sufficient, and so on. Now this quotation, which at first glance looks like it should just go by the by, is actually very important because it implies a distinction between getting money and rising in society. It suggests that those two, although connected, aren't the same thing, and therefore that just having money is not on its own 
sufficient. It puts the emphasis very much on Pip rising in society and becoming a gentleman, and the issue of money goes alongside that, but separately. And the early scenes between Pip and Herbert absolutely have to be seen in this regard. There's a very comedic scene in which Herbert instructs Pip in table manners, and while it can look like a bit of throwaway comedy, it illustrates the difference between wealth and class. Pip now has wealth, but this wealth seems to have appeared as if out of nowhere, and Pip doesn't have the upbringing and the background to know the social behaviours that are expected to accompany that kind of wealth. There is an expectation in this society that if you have money, you will behave in a certain way. And when that doesn't happen in Pip's case, it's a matter of urgency for Herbert to school him in the proper way to behave. And the implication of this is that just having money does not get you anywhere in society, unless it's accompanied by appropriate forms of behaviour. We see what happens when financial greed is disconnected from proper social behaviour. You end up with the hypocritical buffoon characters like Pumblechook. And this can help us explain why Pip is even more self-conscious in that well-known scene where Joe comes to visit him in London. And Joe's rationale for his behaviour is very interesting. Joe says he likes being in the company of gentlemen. He likes the idea that he can come to London and eat with gentlemen. So in that regard, he admires Pip's social class. But look at what he says for himself. He admits that he doesn't fit in this kind of environment. He is more comfortable in the marshes, in the forge, with his hammer in his hand, as he says. He knows where he feels comfortable. And it would be easy to take this as a criticism of Pip's pretentiousness. And to an extent it is. But it doesn't mean that Joe doesn't admire the higher classes. He does. Like I just said, he likes the idea that Pip is a gentleman. But what it shows is that he can admire them without being envious of them. The fact that he likes the idea that Pip is a gentleman doesn't mean that he wants to be one himself because he knows he doesn't fit within that kind of world. And this is not a contradiction. Joe is not being a hypocrite. At this stage in the novel, Pip doesn't understand this. He doesn't understand how somebody can be comfortable in an environment that seems to him to be so rough. And it's learning that learning how it's possible for Joe to be comfortable in that way, that provides him with a key step in his road to developing into a fully rounded adult. But before we get to that, we really have to talk about the return of Magwitch, which happens at the end of the second volume of the novel. And if we're going to suggest single incidents that represent the key milestone in Pip's final development into an adult, this is certainly a candidate. And it's the moment where that distinction that I mentioned earlier about money and social position really comes into focus. Because the revelation that his money comes from a criminal is devastating to Pip for two reasons. Firstly, if Magwitch gets caught, he's liable to have his money confiscated and then Pip's expectations are dead in the water. But more importantly, the fact that Pip owes his expectations to somebody who is dishonourable, who has been exiled for criminal behaviour, means that his social position is now hanging by a thread. If it ever came to be known where Pip got his money from, his social position would be simply erased. So what this means is that in order for Pip to make that final step, and become a rounded gentleman and to have learned from his mistakes, he has to not only shed greed for money, but he has to let go of this need to be high status. The two don't happen automatically one with the other. They are separated out at the beginning of his expectations, and they must therefore be separated out at the end. So just to sum up, Pip's growth as a character in general terms 
correlates very strongly with his changing, shifting awareness of what the concept of social class means. To the extent that you can use social class as a way of tracking his personal growth. And what makes this easier to an extent is the fact that we can compare him and contrast him with other characters in the novel who don't shift in their understanding of class, who provide a kind of constant that we can use to measure Pip. And Joe is the clear example, but he's by no means the only one. Most other characters within the novel remain in a fixed position socially, even if personally they change a lot. So Pip moves from obliviousness to a personal, individual sense of self-consciousness to a broader, more general, more social sense of class awareness. And this finally leads to an acceptance of himself, which then represents the end of the novel.